Okay, so I don't know about you, but I really love shopping for board games outside. Especially if I can get to see them in the retail shops. But the thing about buying them outside is that the games can be super costly. So in today's video, I'll show you where I buy my board games from and also share a few tips on how you can actually get your games at a lower price. So without further ado, let's take a look at the first location. So what I like the most about being in a physical board game shop is that you can really go and touch and feel uh, the game. So it really feels quite nice to have that element there. You can also uh, actually rent a board game if you want to or even play some miniatures right here as you can see. If you don't really know what games to get, you can actually ask some of the staffs here. But of course, one of the downsides about being in a physical board game shop is the cost. The one here costs about 45 bucks. And let's go and find the trail. So this costs uh, about 100, 109 bucks here. But of course, the cost of the games here is also accounting for the fact that it's actually in a physical shop. And uh, Better Bunker is also in Bugis, so it's actually quite conveniently located. So now um, we are going back home and I'll introduce to you some of the other places. So let's go back. Okay, so the e-commerce sites that I usually frequent are Shopee, uh, Lazada and uh, Amazon as well. So on usual days, the prices of these board games would be almost the same as the retail price. But the good thing about these platforms is that they will hold regular sales campaigns. So like, you know, your 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, which will also allow you to get uh, prices that are relatively cheaper than getting them directly from the retail board game store itself. Okay, so one downside about shopping at these e-commerce websites is that there can be a lot of fakes or China imports that are floating around in the listings. Sometimes it can be quite obvious when you see that, you know, the listing is actually from China or the prices of these games are like maybe below $10. These fake games are actually more prevalent for the more popular games uh, like your Unstable Unicorns or maybe your Exploding Kittens as well. Please uh, guys, don't buy fake games. Please go and buy the real games so that you can support the original creators. Uh, yeah, so before I forget, uh, let's take a look at the prices on uh, Amazon itself. So let's search uh, Avalon first. It's uh, $20, so uh, I think if you are registered on Amazon Prime, uh, you don't need to pay for the shipping fees as well. So now let's look at the other game. So uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill, right? It's uh, $48 uh, for the base game itself. So yeah, I mean like uh, you can see on Amazon itself, it's already much cheaper than uh, getting it on the retail store. Another way that you can get your board games is through platforms such as Kickstarter. So Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform that allows you to fund various up-and-coming community projects so that you can get the end product at the end of the day. So how this works is that the public like you and I will be able to fund creators who might not have the initial financial capabilities to produce their projects, which is also what Kickstarter calls turning their ideas into realities. So the types of projects can actually vary a lot and it's not solely just board games. So some of the game projects that you might have heard of would be your uh, Exploding Kittens, your Unstable Unicorn, and even the local uh, Singaporean Dream was actually first started out in Kickstarter. And there are actually a ton of other uh, board games out there in the market today that actually also started out from Kickstarter. So in terms of the pricings, I guess we can consider it the lowest for the games because essentially we are pre-ordering the games uh, through funding it before the release. But what's interesting about Kickstarter is that they will have different funding tiers uh, with their own set of benefits and perks depending on how much you fund or how early you actually back into the project. So some of the perks can include maybe an extra miniature or maybe a customized card uh, created just specially for you. But of course, as you know, Kickstarter is not a retail shop per se. So uh, the games actually are still in production and will need some time to actually manufacture and get distributed. So it might take a few months before the final product actually reaches to your house. And what's more is that because this is the first few batches of the game, there might sometimes be some printing issues or if you're unlucky, there might be some missing components of the games as well. But I think you don't need to worry too much about that because I do see that the creators will usually still send you some additional components to replace or to make up for those missing components. But that said, despite these shortcomings, I still love the whole concept of Kickstarter, of how we can actually support the creators directly and build up more awareness so that anyone can create their own projects as long as they set out to do it. So I would really encourage you to look at the Kickstarter platform uh, when shopping around for games next time. So if you're looking to get games at the lowest price points, uh, I would recommend looking at Carousel. But this is if you don't mind getting uh, second-hand games. Lah. So Carousel is essentially a classified marketplace platform uh, where you can get brand new to second-hand items over there. So if you're getting games there, uh, I would recommend larger games. So uh, if you look at my uh, board game collection here, right? 
So most of my larger games, I actually got them from Carousel. Sometimes the sellers would already buy the organizers for the game uh, and bundle it together when they're selling off the games. So actually one of my game uh, mentions on Madness, I actually bought it as a bundle together with uh, this uh, foam organizers that you see here. And I got both of them at a discounted price. But the good news is based on my past experience, there was never once any missing components to the game. And the parts that were also provided to me uh, also look relatively new. So like I said, right, if you really don't mind that this is a uh, secondhand games, uh, I would say this is the cheapest option where you can get your uh, board games. So before I forget, uh, let's take a look at the app and see uh, how much it costs for uh, Avalon and also uh, Betrayal and House on the Hill. As you can see, they are around the price range of $20 um, sometimes even $18. So now for Betrayal, let's take a look. Currently, I see that there's about a uh, $28 one, um, you know, a $15 one even. So yeah, so I would say like uh, the price points uh, for Avalon would be about $18 to $20. And for Betrayal, the price point would be about $50. But if you really 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 feel that you don't want to spend any money on board games and you have a printer at home, you can actually print and play some games. So one example is Secret Hitler, where they actually have the free PDF online for you to download and you can actually print the game and play it on your own. Another game would be something like Dungeons & Dragons, where you don't really need a lot of components in the game to actually play the game because you just need to print out the character sheet. But I feel at the end of the day, if you are printing out the games, in a way it also will cost money because you are also paying for the ink to print the game itself. <laughs> so to conclude this video, you can see that there's more than one way of purchasing your own board games. Of course, each option will come with its own pros and cons. But I hope through this video, at least it can help you better decide where are the places you can actually buy your board games. And I also hope that you enjoy this format of the video because this is actually my first time uh, doing like a blog style format where I film myself outside in the public. But I hope that that kind of makes this video a bit more interesting. So as always, if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and I'll be releasing more videos like this in the future. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comment section down below. So to the next video, I'll see you around again. Bye!